Hey everybody, it's Seth and welcome to the Insta Good Show. My name is Seth, obviously, and this is the show that helps your church get Insta Good at Instagram. Uh, right now, this is not particularly live. I pre-recorded this so that I can get all the things done ready for the Insta Summit, which is next week. It is a free online summit to help your church get really great at Instagram. And uh, it is one of those, those things I hope you don't miss. In the next year, Instagram is going to become such an important part of your church's social media strategy. It already probably is. You may not know it yet. If you're afraid of it or if it looks ominous to you, this is going to be the summit that really helps you break down all those parts that you don't understand or want to do better at and are able, help you to leverage the whole platform really, really well. It is a very personal platform. It's a very powerful platform. It's one of the last organically uh, far-reaching uh, platforms that you can get uh, without paying for it. So I uh, hope you will get in on the Insta Summit. <clears throat> you can go to theinstasummit.com, get your free ticket, but don't sleep on the later pass, which is then on-demand pass for only 97 bucks that allows you access after this thing is over to all those sessions. And we're adding new sessions even this week from different churches here in the, in the U S that are doing Instagram really, really well. We have influencers, we have business owners, entrepreneurs, experts, gurus, and uh, we have um, not the bad gurus, the good gurus that actually have good followings and know what they're talking about. So it's going to be a really great summit. I can't wait for, for it. Um, it's going to be May 19th through the 21st. That's next week. So that's why today we're getting a recording, but uh, I, I did record this this week. So this is still really relevant. I'm really excited to talk about these things. And especially in the sense of we're going to discuss what, why should a pastor post on social media, namely Instagram. I know many of us struggle with that. We want our pastors and leaders to post and they, they don't really want to, or they won't do it, or they won't make time, or are afraid of it, or don't see a value in it. Whatever the reason, I think there's a re sometimes we don't see the real value in it. And so um, I'm going to play a video really quick from about a two minutes out of an 11 and a half minute video from our good friend, Dave Adamson. Now, Dave has a show here in the church communications group on Fridays that you need to check out called YouTube for churches. It's a phenomenal show. He's a phenomenal human being. And uh, he's going to talk really quickly and in the two, about two minutes, he gives a huge why for why pastors should be involved in social media that you can then take this video and share. I'll put this in the, in the comments section after this show airs uh, in the Facebook group. So you guys can go get this video along with a couple of other things that we're going to show you today. So I'm going to share my screen here and show you this video. It is available on YouTube for the whole thing. So we're only going to watch about two minutes of it, but here's Dave Adamson talking about why pastors should get involved in sharing, particularly on Instagram. Watch this. Hey, my name is Dave. I am a social media pastor here in Atlanta, Georgia. And today we're going to talk about Instagram and specifically how pastors can use Instagram to help people take the next step in their faith journey. Yeah, I think when it comes to pastors using Instagram personally, I think a lot of pastors carry guilt around, should I be using it to, to as a person or should I be leveraging it for my church, right? I, I think it's a yes and, it's a both and option. Yes, you need to be using Instagram in your ministry for 100% because this is how we're going to reach the next generation. If the, if Generation Z is important to you at all, let me tell you, Generation Z is on Instagram. And so you need to be on Instagram with them as a church organization or as a ministry. Um, but you also need to have that personal profile because you want to give people access to you that they otherwise might not have. So so I always say yes. And because, you know, we're, we're we're sitting in a church called Gwinnett Church right now. Gwinnett Church has its own Instagram account. Um, but if I go to Gwinnett Church doc, you know, on Instagram and I respond to a post that they said, or if I post something, um, if I post something onto their page or a story or something like that, it's great when the organization uh, sends a response back. It's even better to me when Jeff Henderson, who's the pastor of this church, sends a response back because it's so much more personal. And I know that my pastor has paid attention to me and, and, and knows what I know or knows what I've done or knows what I can do or knows my name. Even, even that sometimes is such a good thing. So I think uh, pastors need to be commenting on their church social media 
as themselves. I also think that pastors need to have their own Instagram accounts to, uh, you know, personally, not to build a platform, but to extend the role of being a pastor. I tell pastors all the time, being on Instagram will help make you more efficient and more effective because you can reach more people in a shorter period of time and you can be more personal in a shorter period of time. Here's what I mean. Okay, so really good stuff, man. Um, it is thinking about Instagram as an extension of being a pastor is why he wants pastors to use it personally. Brilliant. Well said, Dave. Well said, man. Uh, what a great idea. Um, is there's a fear of do I use it for the church? Do I use it for myself? And I think with pastors. Um, there's often also this element of not knowing where to start, not knowing what to post. And as communicators, this is part of our calling is really to come alongside those pastors and say, here's a bunch of ideas of things you can do easily that are going to be great for you to post on your Instagram account your, itself. Not to mention encouraging them to, to comment on and respond to people on the church's Instagram account. So like Dave was saying, <clears throat> when you someone comments on your church's Instagram and then uh, the church responds, that's really great. That's really, that's awesome. That's incredible if you can do that. But what's even a next step further of greatness is when the pastor himself comes in and responds and says, Hey, saw you said this thing and I want to respond to it. And not always like the negative, but just the positive stuff. And just knowing that the pastor has paid attention to you whether you're a big church or small church, it really doesn't matter. It's really cool that the pastor is not just up there on the stage away from me and inaccessible, but here in the trenches with us on social media and an every man and that can, that will talk with us and hang out with us where we hang out. Um, that's a really cool thing. And so, um, so pastors getting involved in the comment section, big time tip. Let's talk about ideas for pastors. I wrote a blog recently, or recently, a month ago. I'll share that in the notes as well. And it's 16 things that pastors can post on social media. I'm going to give you some highlights here and then link to the blog so you don't have to write all these down or remember these. But uh, things that your pastor can post on their own social media that would be valuable for people who want to see what's going on in their life. All right. Photo of you studying for your next talk picture of the Bible, picture yourself, a selfie, doesn't matter. Picture your office, your bookcase, any of that. So you can say, hey, I'm studying. Great. A photo from your phone. Uh, a photo, and th these can all be done pretty much from your phone. This is what's cool too, is that they don't have to be great. But hey, uh, communicator, if you can go take these photos and then send them to them, and then they can just post them, even better. All right. Um, photo of the book you're reading with a quote in the caption. A photo of a staff meeting happening, have them pose like they're fighting or they're not paying attention. I don't know, something fun. Let your per personality, your staff out. Um, if you meet somebody for lunch, take a selfie with them. That's always great if they will allow it. It is awkward to do that. I'm kind of like, I don't like taking photos in the moment because I want to enjoy the moment. Most pastors are really probably like that. But if you can think of it like, hey, let's get a picture before we get out of here. I want to I want to post on social that we, we got together. Um, if, if they're, you know, pretty good with people, they can find a non weird way to do that. Maybe that doesn't work for them. I don't know. But take a photo of your lunch. That's an Instagram classic that doesn't fail. Uh, so highlight a staff member. Uh, hey, here's our, here's our custodian. Hey, here is our office administrator. Here, here is our worship leader. Uh, they came to us in 1997. And they've been here for so many years, blah, blah, blah. Uh, great. Um, you can always just right click photos from your staff pictures on your website and get them to your phone. That's easy. Just share that photo. Um, highlight an elder or deacon, do the same thing, or ask them for a photo, um, or ask the comms director to get you a photo from their Facebook or Instagram page if you don't know how to do it. Uh, no problem. Photo of the scripture you're reading in your Bible, like a close-up so they can actually read it. Uh, always good. Um, books, when you highlight stuff, pictures of that too. Uh, short one-minute video. You're going to see a minute, and I'm going to share a, 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 an Instagram account of a pastor I think you should follow for not only just because he's great to follow, but an Instagram. Instagram inspiration for what to do on Insta. Um, video, he does a lot of video. Short one minute videos with a devotional thought, or now you can use IGTV for longer thoughts because I know pastors, we love to talk, right? So uh, we're not limited anymore. It's 10 minutes, but we should be able to handle that. Um, short one minute video devotionals. How about you and your spouse on a date? 
uh, you and your pet, your favorite animals, um, let people know what's going on in life, your hobbies, anything you're doing, like if I, you're into woodworking or fishing or what, take a photo, share it. Hey, went fishing today. You know, it's okay. People want to see you doing that stuff. It doesn't mean you're not in the office and not working and not earning your paycheck. But what are we paying that guy for? Anybody that says that, just for, pie face them right out the door because that's not the kind of and that's not the kind of energy you need in your life. You got, you're going to have plenty of negativity without somebody like that. Uh, shoot a live video with a longer devotional. Maybe do a lunchtime thing. Uh, don't be afraid of live video. And that's going to be a hard sell uh, because they could mess up. And, you know, that's, that's difficult for some. Uh, shoot a live video. Recap the main points of your sermon during the week. Like Wednesday, go, hey, remember what we talked about Sunday? These were my points. And then ask a question. What do you think about that? What was your thought of this? What does this verse mean to you? Um, anything like that can work. Photos of volunteers in action. Now, I know right now nobody's really meeting in, in person, but you've got people who are running your live stream. You've got people who are still co collecting on staff. So show some behind the scenes. Uh, let people know what's going on when you're there uh, and thank them publicly because it goes a long way with them and it really goes a long, a long way with your people. Let, let you, them know that you're, you're not a high and mighty, right? You see the people who are making this happen for you. So you can be on stage and look great um, and, and really have no distractions and be, you know, deliver the word of God. Well, thank them. Thanking people is always big, man. We could definitely use more positivity on social media. Um, be the change you want to see in the world, right? And then I just say, get creative. Take a photo of anything you find to be interesting. Thought. Uh, screenshot your tweets. If you're more of a Twitterer, a uh, screenshot of a tweet is pretty good content for Instagram, surprisingly enough. Um, if you don't know how to crop it, ask your comms director, comms directors who probably can, can screenshot it and send it to you. Hey, if you want to post this on Insta, here you go. Um, that would be really helpful. If you want that list, I'm going to send that. It's, it's on my blog, sethnews.com. I'll, I'll just put a link to it so you guys can go get it. It's out there free. Um, but uh, that is the kind of thing that pastors don't really understand why people would really want to see that, but it just humanizes your, your, your staff and your pastor and, and really makes it uh, something that someone that you want to follow. Speaking of that, I want to share my screen one more time and show you a pastor that you should follow. His name is Jeffrey Henderson, Jeff Henderson. Oh, big thing in the way. Here we go. Uh, Jeff Henderson has an Instagram account that is incredibly active very, very straightforward and, and clear what he's trying to do. He is a pastor who has many things going on. On, on his page, um, he's the pastor of Gwinnett Church, if you didn't know that. Former uh, marketing director, I forget what his title was, but he was over all marketing at Chick-fil-A. So he's going to do things right when it comes to this kind of stuff. Um, here's the types of things he's doing. Let's just take a look. IGTV interview. This was a live video, it looks like, that, that went uh, over to like 17 minutes. So he posted this, um, Ford Fry and his restaurant. So here's a local business owner. He just called him up. He's a friend, maybe in his church, interviewed him. Great, easy to do. Call up a member of your church. Let's talk about your business. What's God doing in your life? Just be a pastor. It, it's such good content. And then here we go. This is a video he found that when, and these look weird when you play on the Hi, Mr. Jeff Henderson. Welcome to the Honor Spirit. And I don't know if you can hear that or not, but it's a little YouTube show that he connected with. Uh, here's a picture of his family uh, when they got together. Um, just really, really great. Really great stuff. Let's keep going. Here's a, a walk they did for, and I'm, I'm getting this name wrong, um, Ahmad Arbery. Um, they did a, a gathering for in his memory. That was really cool. So here's an example of a pastor getting involved in social issues. That's really cool um, and doing it in a really well, really good way. Uh, and then again, he posted here for about it. And then you've got, here's a, a, a screenshot, I think. No, it's a video of their worship team. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm gonna get stuck on it. That was so good. <laughs> oh my gosh. Woo. Oh, I hope you can hear that. I forgot to check if my audio was on when I shared my screen. 
another video here is uh, ESPN, um, former NBA, it's Mark Price. Um, so he's interviewing, Jeff has connections, right? So he can interview people like that and like Carrie Newhoff. Uh, so, but still, here's a video of him with his daughter and they're talking about good morning everybody and welcome to Gwinnett Church we are so glad that you're here my name is Jesse and this is my dad Jeff and I promise this week we'll so anyway um long story short go follow Jeff Henderson on Instagram you won't regret it he has incredible content great examples if you pay attention to what he's doing not just getting wrapped up because it's easy to get wrapped up in watching it think about what is he doing here? And can I do something like it? Yes, you can. I don't always recommend copying other people and other churches, but Jeff, if you're, if you're a pastor, Jeff is a pastor who is, who is understanding the platform really well. Uh, Carrie Newhoff is another one, uh, but Jeff is, is a, he's pastor of a larger church, but the idea of what he's doing is very simple. Interviews with staff, interviews with people behind the scenes, family stuff, uh, keeping their values out front. If they do anything at all, it's on his, his Instagram account as well as the church. So that's the kind of thing that pastors can really take part of social media. And it then it just doesn't feel daunting. Like you have to create content all the time. This is just, I'm showing you what my life is like. And my life revolves around being a pastor. That's not hard to really comprehend for us. We just sometimes forget like people want to see that. And it's not bragging. It's not arrogance. It's simply sharing your life with others in a digital space. That's something we have to get over and figure out that it's okay to do that. So anywho, that is the last of the tip for the week. And I, again, hope I'll see you at the Insta Summit. It's going to be really, really great. So um, that's it for the Insta Good Show today, the show that helps you and your church get Insta Good at Instagram. Make sure you sign up for the Insta Summit at theinstasummit.com on May 19th through 21st. It's free, but get the later pass for 97 bucks. That's nothing for your church budgets most of the time. Um, thank you for watching, and we'll see you again. Uh, and uh, oh, 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 sorry, won't have the show next week. This show will not take place next week. It's right in the middle of the Insta Summit. It goes Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So Thursday is typically when we do the Insta Good Show. Uh, we'll come back the following week. We'll do some recaps of some of the great stuff from Insta Summit that you might have missed. Uh, and then uh, we'll continue on from there. So see you around.